Welcome back everyone. Only one more day until Laker basketball returns, and not simply any return, but with their return to the NBA playoffs. As we know, they have a round one matchup with the Grizzlies, who are by no means an easy opponent. I mean, they're the number two seed for a good reason. Even with them dealing with a few injuries, they are one of the most well-rounded teams in the entire playoff bracket, and we all know about the weapons they have. Okay, maybe bad selection of words there, but we talked about the difficulty of defending John Morant in yesterday's video, and I think we can all agree it won't be easy for them, though it won't be Morant alone that they have to deal with. In addition to him, they have a deadly second option in Desmond Bain, a versatile big man in Jaron Jackson, and then plenty of role players you cannot forget about, which is only further complemented by their great defense. They were the third rated defense during the regular season, and much of that was due to Defensive Player of the Year candidate Jaron Jackson Jr. I mean, he would be my vote for Defensive Player of the Year, and we cannot afford to overlook his impact. He once again led the entire league in block shots per game with three of them, and he can all around be a game changer on defense. However, there is one thing that makes him vulnerable, with that being foul trouble, and then when you combine that with their lack of frontcourt depth behind him, it really makes for an obvious weakness. Now, they don't have very many of them, but that would definitely have to be one of them, and in today's video, we are going to talk about how they, and specifically Anthony Davis, can expose it. Before we do that though, if you are looking to turn your NBA knowledge into cash, then be sure to check out Price Picks. Every day during the NBA playoffs, they are giving members a chance to become a millionaire. And no, really, every time you make a six pick flex, you will be entered to win a million dollars, and the best part about it is you don't even have to get all of them correct. If you even get four of them right and two of them wrong, you will still be entered to win, so why not give it a shot? And if you want to follow along with me, here are the 6 picks that I'm going with for tomorrow. I got Anthony Davis dropping more than 2.5 assists, Dylan Brooks making at least 1 free throw, Dennis Schroeder having at least 1 combined block and steal, Eric Gordon dropping more than 10.5 points, D'Lo having more than 8 rebounds and assists, and then Luke Kennard dropping more than 9.5 points. But if you are looking to make your own picks, then be sure to check out Prize Picks for a chance to become a millionaire, and don't forget to use code JSM to get a bonus on your first deposit. Without further ado though, let's get back to today's topic, and like I was talking about before, the Lakers absolutely need to go after Jaron Jackson. Now that might sound a bit weird given him being an elite defender, but they cannot afford to let him become a free roamer. Jaron Jackson can be a game wrecker on defense if you let him, but he obviously cannot do that from the bench. And if there is anybody who should be looking to attack him, it should definitely be Anthony Davis. Now, he likely won't be defended by Jackson one on one, but they will be near each other in the paint. Anthony Davis threw the most fouls per game on their team this season, averaging 5.9 of them per game, and then LeBron was not far behind with 5 of them. But again, I really want Anthony Davis to be the one attacking him. Jaron Jackson will be playing shadow coverage on him, and anytime AD gets by Xavier Tillman, Jackson will be coming over to try and help him. And that is when Anthony Davis needs to initiate contact. If he can even get one or two early fouls on him, that would be huge, because again, they have zero rim protection behind him. I mean, if Jaron Jackson gets in foul trouble, all they have to replace him with are Sandy Aldama and Kenneth Lofton Jr., neither of which are rim protectors. Following the injuries to Steven Adams and Brandon Clark, they lost a lot of size and athletic ability down low, which really makes them rely heavily on Jaron Jackson. They no longer have the luxury of replacing him when he gets in foul trouble. They can't go big without Steven Adams, and then they can't go to a small ball lineup without Brandon Clark either. I mean, Xavier Tillman is not a bad player, but he alone cannot anchor their defense, and neither can Santi Aldama. They know they cannot win without Jaron Jackson being on the court, and with his history of foul trouble, that can often be an issue for them. He definitely is getting a bit better, but it's still not where they'd like it to be. If we take a look at per 36 minute average, Jackson got called for about 4.5 fouls per game. Again, much better than the nearly 6 fouls per game he was called for back in 2021, but it's still been a problem for him at times, and especially when it comes to late game moments. 
It's not even a problem with him fouling in those moments, it's more about him often being in foul trouble by that point already, and then with that preventing him from being aggressive. Even if he doesn't foul out, being in foul trouble will still affect the way he plays, and if he picks up 4 or even 5 fouls by the mid 4th quarter, that will completely change the way he plays defense, which would obviously benefit the Lakers. With him already knowing they don't have much depth behind him, it will definitely be something on his mind, and that alone could affect him even before he gets in foul trouble. And going back to their frontcourt depth problem, that will force them to rely on Jaron Jackson for much longer, and the more minutes he's on the court, the more likely he is to pick up fouls. Up until this point, he has never played over 30 minutes per game in any one season, and nearly 100% of that has been from his foul trouble. I mean, a small part has been injury management, but a large majority of it has been completely self-inflicted. He simply cannot avoid the temptation to go after blocked shots. And while he is quite obviously very good at doing it, even the best get called for fouls when they are being over-aggressive, and that would be the perfect way to describe him. Now, you definitely want your rim protector to be aggressive, but being too aggressive can be a problem, and it's one that Jackson has dealt with for a while now. In order for Anthony Davis to take advantage of that, he needs to be the one to put Jaron Jackson in bad situations, ones that involve him making a quick reaction to protect the rim. Because at that point, he won't even have time to think about it. His body will often simply react. It's what a good rim protector does. However, Anthony Davis cannot hope to do that by settling for jump shots. That won't require Jaron Jackson to do anything. Again, he likely won't be AD's primary defender, or at least not until the late 4th quarter. That duty will fall to Xavier Tillman, and no offense to Tillman, but he cannot keep up with Anthony Davis. If AD makes a quick move to the rim, he is going to get by Tillman 99% of the time. And that will be where he meets Jaron Jackson. He is going to be playing shadow coverage on him all game long until the 4th quarter. And it's not a double team either. It involves him making a last second reaction to leave his matchup to help protect the rim, which again, he is very good at doing. With his 7 foot 4 wingspan and great athletic ability, Jaron Jackson can cover a lot of ground very quickly, though that often can lead to him being put in a bad situation. And that should be the situation the Lakers, and specifically Anthony Davis, are looking to put him in. In my opinion, it could really be the difference between them winning or losing this series. Now, it obviously won't be all Anthony Davis, as LeBron, along with their role players, need to play a part here too, but I believe that Anthony Davis needs to be the one to initiate it. With all of that being said though, what do you guys think? How would you go about dealing with Jaron Jackson Jr. on defense? And do you think that Anthony Davis should be the focal point of it? Comment your thoughts down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.